For today's algorithm, we're going to be discussing the lead code question, binary tree pruning. So the question statement is, you're given a binary tree with the following property. Every node in the tree either contains a zero or a one. The task is to remove all subtrees that contain only zeros. Now, if you look in the bottom left hand corner, we have an example tree that might be passed into this algorithm that you need to write. In this situation, the only subtree that does not contain a one is the subtree rooted at zero at the very bottom of the tree. So the resulting tree after being passed into this algorithm would be one, zero, one. Okay, so before we get started. If you want to go ahead and attempt this question yourself, you can just pause the video. For those of you that have already attempted it, we're going to just go move on right ahead. So first thing we need to do is recall what a binary tree is. Well, a binary tree, as you probably know from our last video, is a tree data structure such that each node has at most two children. And that's the only prerequisite we need to enable to solve this problem. So let's get right into the intuition for this problem. So our task is that we need to evaluate every single subtree of a larger tree. And to do that, we have to consider what is the best way to evaluate subtrees. Well, luckily for us, in this problem, it seems like the best way to evaluate subtrees would be by starting at the lowest level of the subtree or the smallest unit of the subtree in a larger tree. And the smallest unit of a subtree is the leaf node. That is the smallest subtree you can find in the tree. And in this situation, because all leaf nodes that contain zeros inherently violate the property that we're trying to preserve, we realize that we can actually start by evaluating only leaf nodes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the bottom of the tree and check if there's a leaf node that contains a zero. And if there is, we're just going to replace that leaf node with null. And as we do that, we're going to work our way up the tree. So what needs to happen now is that you have to make an observation that if you do this, you will inevitably reach every subtree that only contains zeros, because as you delete these leaf nodes, and replace them with null, you're going to create new leaf nodes. But that depends on which kind of traversal you're going to make over the tree. So now we need to consider, how can we traverse this tree bottom up such that we touch all leaf nodes before moving on to other levels? And the answer to that is that we're going to need to make a post order traversal. So in this algorithm, we're going to have to mimic a post order traversal of the tree in order to reach all the leaf nodes and evaluate them before moving on to other levels. So what we're going to do is we're going to post order traverse over this tree by putting every single left and right child onto the stack. And as we go, we're going to check once we've put everything onto the stack, i.e. we've reached the bottom of the tree, if we are at a leaf node, and if that leaf node contains a zero. And if it does, we're going to return null, which is going to set its parents left or right child to null. And then once the parent is reached and ready to be popped off the stack, it's going to be evaluated to be a leaf node and checked for zero once again, and so on. So let's take a look at an example of this intuition in practice. So we're going to start with a tree, with an example tree, rooted at one, with a left subtree, rooted at zero, with two children, both zeros. And the right subtree of our root is going to be rooted at one, with a left child zero, and a right child one. Now we know the resulting tree should be a single linked list from the root to the rightmost node. But let's take a look at how we get there. So using our algor algorithm, we're going to first do a post order traversal of the tree. 
which means we're going to start at the root and we're going to put its left child onto the stack. And then we're going to put that node's left child onto the stack. But once we're left left, we notice that we're actually at a leaf node that has no left child. So when we move to put its left child into the stack, that element is no, and we simply return. So now we would put that left child's right child into the stack, but that right child is also null, so we simply return. So now that we've done both parts of the post order for this leaf node, we can now go to the evaluation phase. And in the evaluation phase, we need to check, is it a leaf node and does it contain a zero? And the answer is it is a leaf node and it does contain a zero. So we strike it by returning null here. But now, before we can actually set its left child to null, we need to now move rightwards and push its right child of the parent onto the stack. That is That child is a leaf, so both its left and right subtree will return null, meaning we can go ahead and evaluate it immediately. We're going to evaluate, is it a leaf node and does it contain zero? And it is a leaf node and it does contain zero, so we're going to strike it by calling, by returning null. Now both of these returns that were pushed onto the stack are now going to be evaluated by its parent. So its parents left and right subtrees are both going to be null now. But now that its left and right subtrees are null, it's time to evaluate it. And it happens that this is now a leaf node because the other two nodes were deleted. And it does contain a zero. So once again, we're going to strike it and we return null. So now one's left child is null. And now we're going to move to the right side of the subtree. And so we're going to move to that one. And then from here, we have to move leftwards. We move left down to the zero. Now zero's left and right child are both null. So they both return. And it's time to evaluate this node. Now this node is a leaf node because it's left and right child are null and it does contain a zero. So we return null here and strike it. And so one's left child becomes null. And then we have to evaluate the parent's right child. Now the parent's right child is a one, but it's left and right child are null. So we immediately move on to the evaluation step. We notice that it is a leaf node. So we continue with our evaluation, but it does not contain a zero. So we don't have to strike it here. We simply return it. So now it's been, it's been returned and the next element on the stack, which is its parent, gets its right child set to the return of our previous call, which is that node one. That parent gets returned here as well because it is not a leaf node. So it skips the evaluation phase and that sets its next member of the stack, its parent, its right child to it. So now we're left with the linked list rooted at one and three elements, each of which are one. So now we've gone through the intuition example, let's actually write out this algorithm. So to write this algorithm, we're gonna first write our method header. We're gonna call it prune. It's gonna take a node parameter, which we'll call node. And it's going to return a node. Now, the first thing we need to consider when we're writing a recursive algorithm like this is the base case. And the base case here is if our node is null, we simply wanna return null. So we're gonna add that in right at, right at the beginning. We're gonna say if node is null or equals null, then return null. This way, once we reach the bottom level of a node, we just, if it's left and right child or left or right child is null, it's just going to simply return null and stay the same. Now we have to do our post order traversal. So for the post order traversal, we're first gonna move left by setting our node's left child to the recursive call of prune on node.left. And we're gonna set node's right child to the recursive call of prune on node.right. So we've done the post order traversal and now it's time for the evaluation phase. 
So at this point, we've already checked everything else in the tree. So we are at the bottom most level or we've already evaluated the bottom most level. So we're going to now evaluate whether or not we are a leaf. So we're gonna say if node is leaf, of course this means if it's left and right child or null, and node.data equals zero, then here we wanna return null. Okay, so what's the intuition behind this? Again, if we are a leaf and our data is zero, we wanna remove it from the tree. But since we already have a pending member, a pending operation on the stack, setting the left child of our parent to either our node or something else, we're going to return null, therefore setting the parent's left child or right child to null, thereby deleting the node that we want to strike from the tree. And lastly, once we've done the evaluation step, if our node that we just evaluated does not a leaf or its data is not zero, then we need some sort of ending case here. And so we return the node itself, because if it is not one of these two cases, it just wants to be kept on the tree. So the pending stack operation of either setting a left mem member or a, or a right child to a new element, in this situation, we'll just set it to the element itself. So if you have a tree that's just a one and, and has a left and right child one, it will set the left child back to one when you call prune.left and it will, or no dot, prune on no.left and it will set its right child back to one when you call prune on no.right. And that is the entire algorithm. So you'll notice here that we incorporated, we sort of mimicked the post order traversal in order to work bottom up in this situation. And as I said before, the best way to approach this problem was the bottom up solution because we're dealing with subtrees. And when you're dealing with subtrees, you really want to start with the smallest subunit, the smallest unit of the subtree, which is the leaf node, if you can. And this problem, fortunately, it allowed us to do that. Well, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share with all your friends. If you have a video idea, you can also leave that in the comments and we'll probably do it. Thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you in the next video.